Hello, listeners. Welcome to this new episode. This is a sort of bonus extra episode that you're getting. Uh, two episodes this week. And this is a preview of a talk I'm giving on Zoom on Thursday, the 18th of April at 10 o'clock in the morning UK time. My talk is part of a series of teacher-led workshops uh, which are happening uh, as part of the Advanced English Summit between the 17th and 19th of April. My talk is called How to Really Learn Vocabulary and Not Just Stare at Word Lists. And as the title suggests, it's going to be all about the different approaches that you can use to learning words, remembering them and using them beyond just staring at lists of words with translations in your first language. And the organiser of the summit, Claire Whitmell, thought it would be a good idea to interview me about the talk that I'm going to give and about the subject I'm giving. Okay, and that's what you're going to listen to today. Uh, Claire is the host of the Smart English Coach podcast. Uh, this is going to be published on her podcast, but she also said that uh, I could use it on my show as well. And uh, so in this episode, you're going to hear Claire interviewing me about learning vocabulary. And you'll hear me giving my thoughts on these points. Why is vocabulary important? Why do I enjoy teaching it so much? What mistakes do people make when learning vocabulary? What can people do to expand their vocabulary more effectively? And what resources can people use to help them to do this? Okay, I think this is an important topic if you're really serious about improving your English, about breaking the intermediate plateau and changing your study habits for the better long term. I'll be giving lots of advice and thoughts about the subject of vocabulary. But if you want more details, and more specific examples and things, then you can check out my talk. And if you want to sign up for the talk, if you want to check out the other talks that are happening as part of this summit, just click the link in the description, enter your email address, confirm the email that you'll get, and then you'll get all the details and you can just join in. It's on Zoom. You can just join in and see mine and see the others as well. Uh, I think it's going to be a really good series of talks. Um, so yeah, lots of advice here, lots of valuable information, I hope, about expanding your vocab. Um, so I think it's time to get started. You're now going to hear Claire interviewing me. And by the way, this was recorded on Zoom just a couple of days ago. So you will hear a slight drop in in quality, but that's OK. And so, yeah, this is a conversation about my talk. This isn't the actual talk itself. The talk itself is happening Thursday, the 18th of April, 10 o'clock in the morning. Again, link in the description if you want more details and you'd like to attend. OK, so let's get started. And here we go. I'm delighted to be talking to Luke Thompson. Luke doesn't need much of an introduction because you probably already know him. He's the host of Luke's English Podcast, which is the biggest, most popular podcast for English learners. Welcome, Luke. It's lovely to meet you. Hi, Claire. Very nice to meet you too. Thanks for the nice introduction. Very nice to be here. Well, thank you, Luke. And just to let everyone know, Luke's also going to give a talk on how you can really learn vocabulary and not just stare at word lists at the Advanced English Summit. So, Luke, let's start at the beginning. Why is vocabulary important? I suppose it's a fairly obvious answer really you know we need words don't we to, to be able to say the things we want to say but people often will assume that grammar is the main thing uh, i think if if there was a fight between grammar and vocabulary i think that vocab would win actually uh, because you know try saying something without vocabulary it's almost it's it's basically impossible you can say something with no grammar right like tarzan did quite well you know, me, Tarzan, you, Jane, <laughs> you know, or if, you know, if you just do it the Tarzan way, you can get the message across. Um, but if you, you know, so you can do it without grammar, but you can't really communicate anything without vocabulary. That's at a very basic level, right? But we're talking about getting to an advanced level in English. And so, you know, vocabulary range is a really important thing. And this, you know, people taking Cambridge exams will know that you're marked for your range of vocab. Also, appropriacy, knowing exactly which word to use for exactly the right idea in exactly the right situation. 
So it really allows you to have a lot more control. Uh, this helps you with fluency. Mm -hmm. It allows you to express different nuances. It allows you to say exactly what you mean and have the other person understand exactly what you mean. Mm -hmm. It makes it like a, a broad range of vocabulary it makes you more interesting as a person. You know, vocabulary is very rich and very interesting, and there are many possibilities in English. Um, you know, grammar and pronunciation are vital, of course, and vocab is is married to grammar and pronunciation, but you can't say anything without vocabulary. And so that's obviously why it's important. Yeah. And I think that the point that you make that at advanced level, um, your vocabulary has to be much richer. That's a really good point. And in fact, it's one of the big differentiators, isn't it, between levels. So it's, you know, B1 level, you can sort of cope with everyday conversations. But by the time you get to C1, then you can speak with much more precision, can't you? You can, as you say, add nuance and you can add different layers. And what what you end up having basically is a much more interesting conversation at advanced level. Yeah, and it, it, it increases the number of things you can talk about. So that at yeah. lower levels, a lot of it's focused on, you know, the, the, the world around you or your own personal world. And that's reflected in... For example, if you take an IELTS speaking uh, exam, where you it's in three parts. The first part is you know quite personal. It's quite simple, really. Mm -hmm. And if you've got uh, you know pre intermediate intermediate level, you can deal with that, okay. But then when you get into the later parts of that speaking test, especially the third part, that's where you start talking about more abstract things. You know, you start discussing issues and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And you start to explore areas which are further away from yourself, you know, um, and that's where you really need to be able to draw upon a wide range of vocab for all these different possible subjects. Um, and um, yeah, so it's it's, it's yeah. vital really in, in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. And I get the impression, at least from listening from uh, to your podcasts that vocabulary is something that you really focus on also as a teacher. So I imagine that you also enjoy teaching vocabulary. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like teaching all of the different systems, you know, in English, but yeah, I love doing vocab, but I love as a teacher when I'm teaching a lesson and, you know, I, I, I see in whatever the material I'm using that I've got some vocab coming up, then I'm always happy about that. And I know it's going to go quite well, you know, because personally as a teacher, I just like the, I like the X. It's the sort of like a, almost like a game for me to mm. help my learners to really understand a word, to really get it. You know, it's sort of like those games that we play at Christmas or something where it's like a guessing game. Mm. You're trying to make someone think of a word or you're trying, you know, those different yeah. sort of mental games that we play. And so Teaching vocab for me is it is so fun mm. uh, for for that reason, but also because a lot of the time it's not just about giving definitions of words and sort of providing definitions. That could be a bit dry and not necessarily mm. the most uh, useful way to help people learn words. But often it's about uh, it giving examples and demonstrating vocab in context and sort of mm. showing people rather than telling people what a word means you show them what a word means yeah. and that can be really good fun and i'm you know i like to kind of do funny examples mm -hmm. and act out my examples a little bit and that can be just you know a really good fun thing to do you know it allows me to do a bit of acting a bit of comedy um, oh, which is and, of course your thing as well as yeah, yeah. stand-up mm. Yeah, yeah, so you know, it's, it's, it can be really good fun, and I just like the world of of, uh, of vocab, and also you know, the lexical approach is a, yeah. a really kind of a, a good way of looking at, uh, at learning English. I think that you know, you can actually see English as a as groups of of words that kind of go together uh, rather than grammar rules. You know, that is an approach that you can take, and it's yeah. it's definitely works for for learning and teaching English, I think, to see yeah. it as a sort of lexical system. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. I think that, yeah, the lexical approach and, and learning, I mean, my big thing is learning fluency phrases, which, you know, help you to build your conversations. And one of the things I love particularly about English vocabulary is the extent of it, is the the richness of it. And in fact, one of my students told me the other day, and I thought this was a lovely thing he said, is that he's beginning to appreciate how words 
have their own spirit, have their own soul, you know, because a word has a specific feel about it. And that's, I think, one of the most exciting things about vocabulary, how it makes you feel and how you can paint a picture and a very precise picture through the the choice of words that you use. Yes, absolutely. And the way they sound as well. Yeah. Because, you know, words have got so many dimensions you know it's mm. the, the the meaning it's the form the spelling and the sound mm. that those mm. words make and some words can be very beautiful and that's very interesting in itself mm. you know the the sort of uh, linguistics behind the mm. beauty of words and that's mm. you know all the different sounds that you know the combination certain combinations of sounds make words beautiful you know mm. um and um so yeah and also some words can be kind of harsh and hard mm. you no know, i mean you look at swear words for example not mm. that i'm going to say any of them now but <laughs> it's very interesting the the kind of the the sounds that they have and you know so yeah there's many different things to enjoy about about words yeah absolutely yeah so moving on now to how um other people experience learning vocabulary what mistakes do you think that people make when they learn vocabulary um, well, like in the title of my talk, you know, I think mm. I, I often see learners, my, my students in class, um, and they're making an effort, you know, they're, they're, they've decided to keep a notebook or they're trying to keep vocab lists. But so many times I look over their shoulder and I just, like the typical student will have a list of English words, often just single words, and then next to them just like a, a translation. Mm. In, in the first language, which obviously is, I understand the reason why people do that because it's just the quickest, most efficient way of recording vocab, right? Because let's be honest, you don't always have time to write out all the possible things you can write. And so just naturally, you just assume that a translation is going to be the quickest way. But, you know, words and phrases don't always translate perfectly. That can lead you to all those problems that you can have with false friends. And it also means that you're not taking into account all the other possible, all, all the other important things that you have to note in order to really remember words and give yourself a chance to use them again. There are so many things. And if, you, if, you, if we're talking about keeping a vocab notebook, um, doing it in English, uh, is is definitely it takes a bit longer, but ultimately it's better for you. And there's lots of really lo so many other things you could write in your vocab notebook. Those mm. are some of the things I'm going to talk about um, in in my talk. You know, we talk about things like examples, yeah. little mnemonics to help you remember mm. um, pronunciation notes. It doesn't have to be the phonemic script, although that's probably the best way. Mm. Um, you know, synonyms and antonyms. Um, collocations yeah. you know how does that word fit into a sentence what's the what what words often go before and after it yeah. are prepositions involved you know and just adding a bit more detail can yeah. actually make a huge difference it, it, it brings the words to life it makes it much more memorable and while if you approach words in that way you're more likely to stick words together you know uh, and 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 that's actually how we remember them you know, you, you take yeah. a word and you put it into a network of other words. And that sort of reflects the way the brain works in a way that it's sort of, you make connections to things by establish, you know, you, you remember things when you connect them to things you already exactly, know. Exactly, when you can see patterns as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with everything you said. And, you know, I also ask my students to think about how, how the word is used. You know, is it formal is it informal is it particularly american or particularly british because how you use the words is is going to be important isn't it you know mm. you mentioned swearing i mean there are lots of contexts where swearing is perfectly fine and lots of contexts where you know perhaps not so, not so fine yes yeah yeah all these dimensions as you said yes, yeah sort of yeah. like a, is it is it more formal is it often used in a more formal setting is it more sort of like a colloquial uh, is mm. the does the word have a sort of pejorative feel to mm. it? Is it, if you're using this word to describe someone, does that, for example, if you're describing someone's personality, does that have a negative sense? And can you mm. say the same thing, but in a more, with a more positive spin? 
Mm. You know, Um, there's just so many different connections you can make. The more you do, the more connections you make and more dimensions you understand uh, with a word and note them down, the more chance you're giving yourself of remembering and using those words again and using them correctly. I think it's because your brain tells you, doesn't it, that this is really important because you're making such an effort with that word and thinking about how you use it, how you say it, how the words, you know, partner with other words. Doing all that is quite time consuming. Um, we're not talking about a quick translation here. And I think that tells your brain, you know, you know, what, you know, listen out for this. This is an important thing. And it, you give yourself more chances to actually yeah. remember. Yeah. I, I think also another mistake that people make sometimes is they assume that every word that they've been given or every word that they've found, they have to remember mm-hmm. and understand every single one. It's basically a hundred percent or it's or it's nothing you know people to an extent i think with learning english like any other language you have to allow for a certain amount of uh, uh of ambiguity or a certain you know a certain level of failure as well so if if my students get a word list i think sometimes they feel like if i can't remember all of these then i've failed you know but it doesn't doesn't really matter you know you can just if you remember 50% of, of that word list, then that's that's still success, you know, that's still yeah. a success. So it's sort of like, you know, remembering anything is better than, you know, it doesn't have to be 100% or nothing. No, no. Yeah. I think it's also your choice, isn't it, to decide which words you're going to actively learn, that words that you want to become, you know, part of your active vocabulary and, and words that you're happy just to be able to recognise. And, you know, we talk about passive versus active, and certainly my passive vocabulary is much bigger than my active vocabulary. I don't use all the words that I know. Um, I only use the words I'm, um, you know, comfortable with, I'm familiar with. And, you know, I think, as you say, it's a mistake to think you've got to learn everything because, you know, there, there isn't enough time, I think, yeah. more than anything else. Yeah. 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 I just would add one other thing, which is just the also the well, two other things, really, I suppose. The importance of um, consuming a lot of English, mm. like reading a lot and listening a lot, because obviously there's a whole school of thought, a whole academic uh, approach, which says that this is actually the best way to to increase your 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 vocabulary is just by input. You know, the, mm. the more the more you read, the more you listen, and especially if you're particularly engaged and interested in the things that you're reading and listening to, um, then. You know, you sort of flood your 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 brain with with a lot of words, and uh, through exposure and through repetition of seeing certain words again and again and again, you get, you know, you just sort of naturally start to acquire um, vocabulary. So that's also a really important thing. You've just got to be actively involved in um, absorbing English as much as possible. Um, so there's the sort of passive approach like that, and then there's the more active considered approach where you can be you know playing also not only noting things down but the approach you take when you look at your notes um and thinking outside the box a little bit finding ways to test yourself ways to jog your memory just little things even just like if you've got an example sentence just putting your finger over the words Mm. or just covering parts of a page and Mm. sort of like seeing if you can remember and then uncovering it and seeing if you've got it right um um, you know, and personalization is the mm. second thing as well. Mm. Actually, using words that you that you're learning, so not just writing them down and noting them and then staring at the lists, but actually trying to then uh, turn it into productive practice where you've got a list of words and then you can actually try and start using them. And this is where things like um, actually Chat GPT can be really yeah. useful because you just you've got your word list and you you just say to Chat GPT. Can you can you give me some fun conversation questions using all of these words? And bang, it does it for you. And often with ChatGPT or other AI, often those questions can be a bit dry and a bit weird sometimes. Mm. But all you need is to have a bit of imagination and creativity yeah. and just you can just kind of go off on some monologue you know based on the if the you know I don't know what the what the phrase is if it's like. Um, to, to look forward to something, you know, that might be one of your phrases and chat GPT will say, is, is there a holiday coming up that you're looking forward to? And then you just say, yeah, I'm really looking forward to my, uh, my trip to uh, the South of France this year, or I'm looking forward to my birthday. And, you know, 
I mean, that's a phrase everyone knows, but um, you yeah. Know. But it's not it. always easy to replicate, is it? But yeah, the more practice you get. And in fact, yes, it's lovely that you mentioned chat GB. <laughs> try to say that word again, <laughs> chat GPT, because yeah. it's a huge resource and it's for free and it sort of condenses everything from the internet. So it's a massive resource for learning vocabulary. And that kind of leads me on to uh, my next and actually final question for you. What else can people do to expand their vocabulary more effectively? You've mentioned chat GD, I'll say it again, chat <laughs> GBT. This is something I'm normally right rather than say. But apart from that, what other ways are there for people to expand their vocab? So I could talk about some different tools that people can use. So mm. um, chat GPT or Microsoft Copilot is another one, oh. which is another free one. It's like the Microsoft version, and I, I, you can just go to you just Google Microsoft Copilot, and you, you'll go there, and it's another chatbot. It actually uses ChatGPT four as its base okay. programming, whereas the free version of ChatGPT is actually ChatGPT three. So I right. don't know right. the paid version of ChatGPT is ChatGPT four, but there's a free there's like a way to get in the back door through Microsoft Copilot. Right. It's, Good tip there. <laughs> yeah, so Copilot's also a really good one. You can just like use e either of them. So there's them, and there's many ways you can use them. I mean, you can use them as a, as dictionaries. That's not my favorite mm. way of using mm. them. But really, what you want, I suppose, is something that will give you lots of examples. And generative AI is brilliant mm. at doing this. Mm. This is the, what it's best at. Mm. In fact, this is what it's its whole its main raison d'être is to, you know produce language so you can tell chat gpt to give you examples of words and it will do that you know just forever and and that's great for practice you know and there's so many things you can do with those word lists you can take them you can gap fill them you know whatever um also uh it will give you questions that you can use for discussion practice but there are other resources too of course the classic dictionaries uh, are just amazing and my favourite ones are like Collins Dictionary, Oxford uh, Learner's Dictionary, the Cambridge Dictionary Advan of Advanced English, I think it is, um, Longman Dictionary, um, the, the uh, Macmillan Dictionary. So Cambridge, Oxford, Collins, Longman, Macmillan, they all have free dictionaries online. And they will give you, obviously, the definitions of words and all the different, many definitions there are. It'll give you the, it'll tell you the part of speech. It will tell, it'll give you the pronunciation uh, often in both American and British English, uh, in phonemic script, but also in mm. audio. There's an audio file for them. They'll give you example sentences. They'll give you, you know, uh, so yeah. much information. So, you know, people. I don't know why people don't use dictionaries all the time. Uh, well, but... I am a fan of dictionaries. I used to work for Longman, actually. And oh, so really? I, yeah, I'm a particular fan of uh, Longman dictionaries. Um, that's my loyalty, obviously. But yeah. also what I liked about Longman dictionaries is that they have, a 2,000 words um, sort of uh, lexis. So all the words that they have are described and explained using just 2,000 words. They're sort of like the most frequent words. So that means that the definition of the word is never going to be more complicated than the word itself. They're very, very sort of user-friendly in that respect. They're, they're excellent dictionaries, but mm. obviously um, the other dictionaries are brilliant and you, you, we also obviously have the American ones, the Mer Merriam-Webster dictionaries. They're also excellent. Yes, it's a perhaps an underused resource. Yeah, and there are also other types of dictionary. It's not just your standard dictionary. Uh, obviously, you know English English dictionaries we're talking mm. about here at this level. That's what you should be using, um, everyone. Uh, in my opinion, that's a monolingual, not the bilingual dictionaries you're talking monolingual. about. Monolingual. So rather yeah. than if it's if you're French, for example, rather than using an English French translation yeah. dictionary, but just English English. Um, uh, and in Longman, the Lo the Longman Language Activator is amazing. Yes, I remember when that came out. <laughs> yeah, really, I've got one on the shelf. Oh yes, I love the Activator. So the the Longman Language Activator is just amazing. It's I mean. Um, it's just a new way to organize words, essentially. So let's say if you're looking at the word uh, listen, uh, what, the, what the activator does, it lists other related phrases that sort of fall under that uh, sort of um, topic or semantic area, right? So you've got listen, you've got pay attention, 
listen out or listen out for something to listen in listen in on someone's conversation to mm. eavesdrop mm. uh to bug someone's apartment or bug someone's telephone to tap someone's phone yes to monitor someone to hack you know listen up as well a listener an audience to be a good listener you know so to tune into something so that's a really good way of sort of like uh exploring uh related you know words that have related meanings another one which is not longman that's a competitor is the oxford collocations uh, dictionary yeah. mm. and again this will just sort of tell you uh words that go with other words so i don't know if we just go if i try and find listen again um you can see how fast i can find words not very fast um we'll see what the kind of collocations it has for for that so listen so it gives you the adverbs like listen actively listen mm. attentively listen carefully listen closely listen hard mm. not listen hardly no mm. listen hard listen intently you know uh, and it gives you verb plus listen nobody will listen to me i tried to listen she wouldn't listen to not bother to listen she didn't bother to listen you need to listen should listen be prepared to listen be willing to listen refuse to listen and listen for listen to it gives you the prepositions mm -hmm. and phrases like listen with one ear which is a mm -hmm. very american english expression mm -hmm. which means you're not fully listening so I think I've heard that to listen with one ear. Yeah. But then you also have listen, you know, it goes in one ear and comes out the other. Yeah. So it's like a, a, a tunnel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like talking to my six year old daughter about her homework. I'm saying, so, you know, you've got to make sure you do your homework after school today, you know, before we pick you up. And it's, it goes in yeah. one ear, it goes out the other and ear. That's, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah. you're right. Collocations are, I think, absolutely vital because they, they also help with fluency. You're not sort of searching around to find that word that goes with the word you're using. And the activator, I mean, it, it's so much more than a thesaurus, which, you know, we use as, you know, just for synonyms, it's all the other phrases. So, you know, the, the problem I think with a lot of learners is that you don't know what you don't know. So you don't know lots of synonyms for listen. You don't know the phrase for to listen with one ear, for example. And this is where these dictionaries really, really help. Yeah, when you start getting into something like this, suddenly pew, all these other words and phrases open up, reveal themselves to you. And again, you're not going to remember them all, but that doesn't matter. You don't have to remember them all, but you do need to be present. You need to be at the party, as it were. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, you know, you've got to be there. And you know, we talked before about the importance of personalizing and using language because if you don't lose, if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you've got to keep trying to use these things mm -hmm. and I, i'll mention as well pronunciation which is obviously really important because you've got to know what words sound like and how to actually make them with your voice you know how to say those words and that's something that's really important too and so you, you need sort of spoken samples of, of vocab and um another uh, resource which um lots of people will know about is youglish.com mm. You know about this, I guess, because mm -hmm, uh, it's mm -hmm. so useful and brilliant. Mm. Youglish, um, it's basically a way to to search YouTube videos for samples. So you just go onto youglish.com, Y-O-U-G-L-I-S. Yeah, it's you as in you and me, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so instead of English, it's youglish. Mm. Uh, and then there's a search uh, bar, and you can just search for a word or phrase, mm. and it will just give you video sample after video mm. sample after video sample of people using that phrase and you can skip back and see the the greater context of the word yeah. it provides you with subtitles you can actually filter your 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 search with american english australian english british english irish english or everything and that's just a really great way of hearing people using words just naturally not even yes. and they're just using them in some other situation they're not yeah. they're not there to teach you so you you hear words just being used in a very sort of like everyday way yeah. and that you know you hear them being squashed and i was about like, to say that's the important thing isn't it because when you hear words in context you know they're not single words you're talking about words in a sentence or in a phrase so if they're spoken fast then they're going to change their sound very often and I think that's one of the problems people have when when they listen. The word that they are hearing is not a word they recognise from just the the audio. You know, 
that they'll recognize it if they saw it written down, but spoken, it's going to change form a little bit. And that's, I think, a, a really big challenge at all levels, but also at advanced level, you, you don't recognize the word because it's changed its pronunciation because of the words before or after. Yeah. yeah very interesting. Okay. Lovely there's, there's, resources. Definitely. There's, I mean, I, I, I won't say more because uh, I'll end up saying all the things I'm going to say <laughs> in the talk. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So if you want to get the rest of um, all these fantastic strategies for learning vocabulary effectively, then do come along to Luke's talk. So Luke is going to be talking on Thursday, the 18th of April at 10 a.m. UK time. So a little bit of background information about the Advanced English Summit. It's a three day online event from Wednesday the 17th of April to Friday the 19th of April. It's for you if you are already at an intermediate level, but you want to get further, you want to get to advanced English level. There will be 10 talks by English teachers, po uh, podcasters and coaches, including Luke. And the talks are going to be on improving your speaking, your listening, your vocabulary, your grammar, and your writing, and also to help you pass English exams. The Advanced English Summit is completely free. All the talks take place on Zoom, and you also get the recordings afterwards. To get your invitation to come to the Zoom talks, you do need to sign up, and the sign-up page is smartenglishcoach.com slash summit, and I will put this link in the comments for you. So, Luke, thank you once again. This was a really, really interesting talk, really useful for people, how you can learn English, but learn English really effectively. And I'm really looking forward to your talk. Yeah, me too. Thanks very much for inviting me. And uh, for those people who will be there, I'll see you there. Thank you very much indeed, Luke. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. So there you go. That was me being interviewed by Claire Whitmell from the smart english coach podcast and uh, if you would like to attend my talk as claire mentioned just click the link in the description for this episode then add your email address at the bottom of the page you'll then receive another email which you will need to confirm and then you'll get all the details of all the talks including mine and uh yeah so again mine's on the 18th of april thursday the 18th of april at 10 o'clock in the morning uk time and I expect that for some of you, that will be in the middle of the night. For some of you, that will be in the middle of the day. You might be working or something and you might not be able to attend. But if that is the case, don't worry. You can actually see a recording of the workshop. But to get that recording, you'll need to um, still sign up, okay, following the link that I mentioned, which is in the description. Okay, so I may well see you there, in which case, see you there. But otherwise, I'll speak to you again on the podcast soon. Thanks again to Claire. And uh, that's it. Speak to you next time. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.